Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom in Michigan where Judge Slavin once again takes on the Sovtard known as Eric Martin. And in this particular pre-trial hearing, uh, he tries to file a motion to fire his lawyer, the court-appointed lawyer that Judge Slavin himself appointed. Now, will it work? Probably not because so many of his motions have either not made it through because he doesn't know the process or just flat out blown up in his face. Now, which one is this going to be? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this freaking show on the road, shall we? Martin was here, and now he's gone, so... Uh, Mr. Martin was here, and now he is not here. I was separate 30. People versus Eric Martin. Good morning, Your Honor. MIDC counsel on behalf of Eric Martin, Josh Hadley, P number 80080. All right. Today was the date and time set for a settlement conference. Mr. Martin had appeared and he signed out and is no longer here. He left the court, the Zoom court. Uh, there was also a uh, motion and demand to replace his current attorney, Joshua Hadley. And you would be the second or third attorney, I think, I'm appointed to, Mr. Martin? Yeah, I don't doubt that it would be his second or third attorney that has been appointed to that wackadoodle because his zany ideas about how the law works just don't fit with reality at this point. Poor little Eric Martin lives in his own little fantasy world, and, uh, well, none of us are invited. I can't speak to it, Your Honor, but I do believe that that's correct. I I was um, I know I'm not normally one of your house counsel attorneys. I was reached out and spot appointed on this. I believe I'm successor, maybe third attorney on the on the case. Right. Judge, he is back in the waiting room now. Oh wait, wait, he's back in the waiting room now. Here he is. And Your Honor, I was not served a copy of the motion um, to replace me, so I I will not stand obviously in opposition if that's been filed with the court. Well, it's been filed by Mr. Martin, so it was it was handwritten. Um, Mr. Martin, turn your video on, please. All right. All right. This, yeah, this is uh, People of City of Taylor versus Eric Martin. Uh, today's the date and time set for a settlement conference in this matter. Mr. Martin, you had filed a handwritten motion to replace uh, your attorney, Mr. Hadley. Mr. Hadley is like the second or third attorney that I appointed to you on this driving on a restricted uh, license. Um, and replace him, which will require another. Uh, it says that uh, your attached motion, you'd like to fire the attorney and replace him, which will require another appointed attorney time to get familiar with this case and your defenses. Yeah, this is just another delaying strategy on the part of uh, Eric Martin. While he's not exactly a legal genius, he knows how to be an obstructionist. He's going to hold this out until they get tired of him. But will it work? Let's find out. So, um, there's nothing wrong with this attorney. Uh, what, what's the problem with this attorney? He's a very highly qualified attorney who I appointed to you. This is a driving on a revoked license I'm not sure what uh what the issue is here with this attorney pointed out in uh in the motion and demand to to uh, get rid of him was uh replace him was because uh hey, hey mr that, martin hang on i can't hear anything you're saying because uh, the tubes behind here are... all right go ahead yeah, just as I pointed out in the motion was uh, because he told me that I would I can't say nothing during a trial. If he talks, I can't talk. Basically, uh, I have to violate my own right to freedom of speech. Well, you laid paint chip eating doofus. There's a vast difference between the freedom of speech you have out on the streets and uh, 
the kind of speech that's allowed in court. You see, there's a process that goes on here. You just can't go on on a tirade about things that are relevant to the case. You've got to remain laser-focused on the point of the case. Otherwise, you're just going to be talking out your ass. Or did you not learn that in your 30 years of uh, law experience? Yeah. And uh, what was the other reason? Let me refresh over it again. Okay. And, oh, there's other reasons. And plus, he kept cutting off several times as we just talked. Not like it was a one time thing, like it might normally happen. People don't intentionally, you know, like cut off. So it happened several times to go show he, had, he was doing it intentionally. All right. right so, two, uh, so, you're, so you say you want to talk at trial. You have two different options as far as talking at trial. One is you can you have the right to testify on your own behalf if you want to. And no one's going to stop you from testifying on your own behalf. Now, if you're planning on um, doing that, your attorney can ask you questions. Um, and you can also be subject to cross-examination, just letting you know. And you'll be under oath. So any sort of perjury or anything like that, you could be uh, you know, subject to obviously the penalties of perjury if there was any sort of untruths that were stated by you on the record, on the on the witness stand. Now, the other way you would be able to speak on your own behalf is if you're representing yourself. So I think what Mr. He Mr. Headley is talking about is like uh, if someone asks a question or and he wants to say objection because there's a legal reason to say objection. Um, I don't need both of you to say objection. Just one person can say objection. I think that's what he's, it's going to be confusing if you're going to try to talk over top of your own attorney when it comes to that sort of stuff. If you uh, want to represent yourself, you're more than, you're more than welcome to represent yourself. Um, and you can talk, you can be the attorney, you can say objection and that kind of stuff. Um, but in that situation, I would still have Mr. Hadley there. Uh, as a standby so that you can ask, uh, you know, legal questions. But there's no reason to to, uh, to fire Mr. Hadley. He's a very competent attorney, and this is a very straightforward case. You either had a license at the time you were driving, or you did not have a license at the time that you were driving. And all we have to have is, um, as far as the elements go, we have to have a witness that shows that you were operating a motor vehicle on a, on a public street, and you didn't have a license. Those are the elements of the case. So I don't know who the witnesses are. We haven't heard any testimony, so I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. But I'm pretty sure that Mr. Hadley can handle uh, a case like this or be uh, or be the uh, standby the, there sitting with you in case you have a legal question when it, come, when it arises. So um, that's uh, for that reason. I'm going to deny your motion because you have very competent counsel. You requested counsel, and I don't see any legitimate reason to fire this attorney and hire a new one, especially when you stated right in your motion that our attached motion and demand to fire the attorney and replace him, which will require another appointed attorney time to get familiar. I'm not, I'm not kicking this case down the road again and adjourning it out again, um, just so that we can stall for more time. Damn! Oh, yeah, the judge saw right through your little ploy to try to delay the trial, and it's not going to happen anymore. Mr. 30-year legal scholar? Yeah, legal scholar of what? I don't know. I mean, he hasn't shown any legal sense since I've watched him. So there's literally nothing in the elements that Mr. Hadley doesn't, isn't aware of. So I'm going to deny your motion. Now, if you want to represent yourself... I'll have Mr. Hadley be there as your standby attorney so that you have an attorney that you can ask questions to right in the courtroom. Or uh, Mr. Or Mr. Hadley will be the one who's going to uh, represent you. And if you want to testify, that's entirely up to you. Your Honor, if I may briefly, um, sure. as Mr. Martin's waived attorney client as to the uh, contents of our communication, um, I've never told Mr. Martin that he was not allowed to testify on his own behalf. Uh, for the record's sake, Mr. Martin has proposed that we would have dual opening arguments and dual closing arguments if there was a difference in trial strategy. I've explained to him that the court's not going to entertain tag teaming this uh, proceeding. You know what? Two I got two listen. Closings. If you want to, if you want to say a closing, and he wants to say a closing, sure, go ahead. I got no. 
I got, I got, listen, I got no problem. The court is not, uh, the court is very, 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 very astute in the law. And you know what? If you want to talk, uh, you want to do, you, you want to do an opening argument, you want to do a closing argument for yourself as well. Listen, I'm just going to remind, remind, remind Mr. Martin that you have a right to remain silent and not have any of that silence used against you. But Mr. if you Martin. want to get up, at, but if you want to get up and speak, I'm going to caution you right now of what you're not going to do. One, you're not going to testify until you've actually testified. You're not going to talk about things that are not in evidence. So if you're going to be like, hey, I did this or they did this in the opening statement. Now, if you're going to want to say that it's going to like everybody else does in their opening statements here in this trial, the the, uh, the evidence will reflect or the evidence will prove X, Y and Z typing, hy talking hypothetically. Sure. But if you plan on not testifying then you better not testify during your opening or closing statements because you're not subject to cross examination at that point, And that would be unfair for the other side. If you are going to testify about your own opinions, about your own uh, statements of fact that you think happened, you're going to do that on the stand if you want to do that, or you're not going to say it at all. You understand, Mr. Martin? Because that's not fair to the other side. That's like letting you move chess pieces and the other side doesn't get to move any chess pieces. Because there's a whole rhythm, there's a whole flow to it, there's a whole fairness to the whole process. So if you're going to testify during your opening or during your closing statements, then you're going to testify on the stand. But if you're not going to testify in the stand, which is your choice, you have the right to remain silent on that, then you're not going to bring up things that aren't in evidence because your testimony isn't in evidence. So you're not going to sneak it in or slide it in during your opening or closing statements. Do you understand that? Uh, before I answer that question... Mr. Martin, uh, the answer is yes or no. Do you understand the statement that I just stated? I comprehend it. Okay, um, you comprehend it. Very good. Else. So next day, next next uh, next topic is um, we'll be uh, everybody's ready to go. That is uh, set for the trial, and uh, we'll see everybody here for trial. I have some objections, and I have to, something else to say. Now, I never said that today was uh, Joshua never said he testify. He wasn't talking in that. I couldn't speak. He was. It's already. Strictly, it's already been. You know. Sir, it's already been resolved. It's already been resolved. If you want to make an opening statement, you can make an opening statement. If you want to make a closing statement, you can make a closing statement. So yeah, I got no problem with both of you making right. your opening and closing statements. And with regard to testimony, if you want to testify, you can testify. If you want to remain silent, you have that constitutional right to do that too. So yeah, courts okay. not stop yeah, you from okay. doing any of that. Okay, so. The motion to remove the motion to remove Mr. Hadley has been decided, so there's no more need, or, need nor discussion for that. I've already made my ruling on that. So that was the that was the point of today. Was the uh, your motion was up for today? We've room, made a ruling on that motion, and um, we'll see everybody at trial. Have a good rest of your day, sir. Get ready, everybody. He's about to do something stupid. Yeah, uh, Eric here is going to do something rather stupid. He is going to try to file a motion on the motion that was just denied. And, well, it works with predictable results in this particular scenario. Outright denied again. I have a motion to make Briefly, I have I have a motion to the trial based on other motions that I filed to dismiss the case and they have not been ruled on yet. So you said your motion to dismiss? I have several motions to dismiss already filed in this case. That are <laughs> right, and I already ruled on your motion. I already ruled on your on your motion to dismiss. And if you're just going to refile the same thing, then it's it's still dismissed. You can't just keep filing the same motion to dismiss. No, one of those same motions. Now I'll go over the motions I'm talking about specifically here. One based okay. on the eleventh that I. August so 19th. we'll hear we'll hear we'll hear any other motions on the day of trial, sir. So be prepared because yeah. we'll do hear those we'll hear those in person here uh, and uh, before the trial starts, if the trial starts. Because if your motion is That's successful, then, then we obviously won't start it. But we're not hearing those today. Those weren't scheduled up or noticed up to be heard today. Those are going to be heard on the day of trial, so we can do them here in person. And then uh, if your motion is successful, then we won't have trial. 
if it, uh, if it is not successful, then we will. But that way, everybody will be ready to go on that same day. So we're going to see everybody on the day of trial. And any other motions that you have, we will take care of at that time. Mr. Hadley. Your Honor, one, I would like to get a working phone number for Mr. Martin. I've been unable to reach him for several weeks. Mr. Martin, do you have uh, my, I'm going to put you into a breakout room. So because I don't want to broadcast your uh, information online. And then second, your hey, Honor, hold on. Um, I've been Mr. Martin, hang on. Mr. Martin, hang on. Mr. Martin, hang on. Mr. Hadley, what was the second part of your? Thank you, Your Honor. I have not received or been able to get copies of any of the pro se motions that have been filed other than the motion for a hearing to determine nature cause of case. Would it be acceptable to reach out to your staff to get copies of these pro se motions in advance of the trial next week? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Martin and Mr. Hadley, I'm going to put the two of you into a uh, breakout room so that you can um, swap uh, information as far as phone number and things like that. So, there you Thank go. Thank you, Your Honor. Jump in here. I still have a verbal motion to make, Joseph. All right. So, go ahead and uh, talk with Mr. Hadley in the breakout room. You can sign out from there. Well, good luck with that motion to dismiss. I really doubt that it's going to come through this time. I mean, every other time you've tried it, it's pretty much blown up in your face because, well, your knowledge of the law is pretty well uh, not existent at this point. I mean, if you would have actually known the law, you probably would have had a driver's license. But seeing as how you're a soft heart, yeah, law is not exactly your best subject. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?